MPEG Stream Clip is a free program that you can obtain through the web at Square 5. And this program is utilized to convert files to other files that you can use to either export for some delivery option that you want, or perhaps you want to convert something so you can work in your editing program and increase your workflow speed. So for example, let's say you're working on a 64-bit program, but you're collaborating with somebody and they are working on a 32-bit program, like an older version of Adobe Premiere, um, Avid Media Composer, or perhaps Final Cut 7, all of the, any old program from you know two or three years ago where, again, they were 32-bit. This is where you want to go ahead and select a option. So that way, whether it be yourself or someone else is working on that program, you can speed up your process and you don't have to sit there and render all the time by having proper clips that match your sequence settings. So having said that, I have three items on my desktop. I have a video clip, which is an H2, H.264. I have an MP3 audio file, a sound file, and I have a DVD that's in my drive, my DVD drive. And I wish to, let's say, take out a portion of the video or the video from the DVD and convert it to something because I'm working on a project or whatever the case is and I need to obtain some footage from that DVD. So having said that, first thing you do is after you select the application, you'll see it on your desktop. This is the interface here. You'll select a video, for example, drag it in here. Once you do that, you'll see a preview of your video. You can send in and out points as well. If you just want to put a portion out. And once you are have made your selection of what is it you want. Let's say I put that. So I'm selecting the letter I and the letter O to put in and out points. You go to the upper left corner of your desktop and you'll select on the file menu and you'll go to export. Now here it says export to QuickTime, DV, AVI, and so on and so forth. You'll select whatever it is you need to select. On my case, I'll select QuickTime. When I select on QuickTime, I see this window up here. You see compression, select here, and here you will have whatever it is you're trying to go out to. Now this footage is 1080i, so let's say I want to make it 720 for whatever uh, uh, compressor I want to so I can select on there um, if you do not see anything that you find here that you're going to utilize in your program select what comes closest or let's say I'm working I'm down converting I want to go to um, DVC Pro 50 because I'm working on an old Final Cut project or I can use Apple ProRes, whatever the case may be. Once you make your selection, the quality, I want 100% quality, and you know, that's up to you. You don't have to do that. You'll see down here where it says frame size, I put 1280 by 720. Again, you can change this to whatever it is you want. I'm going to leave it at 720, uh, 1280 by 720. And here I have field dominance. Now. I don't know if you're familiar, if you're working on a program, make sure you look at your sequence and make sure that this matches the sequence settings. So if it's a lower field, you'll select the lower field. If it's upper field, you'll select upper field. So make sure you understand that. Once you do that, what kind of, if you have audio, you put sound, uncompress. If that's not the case, select what kind of sound you need to use, stereo or mono and 48 kilohertz if you need 48 if it's 41 32 whatever the case is again look at your sequence settings if you're collaborating with someone ask them what their sequence settings are so again you give them whatever it is 
that they require. And once I do that, I can select on the bottom right hand side which says make movie. Once you get that, you'll get a window of where should this be. So I'm going to rename this to making the real episode A. So I don't want to have the same name as my original. I don't want to override it by mistake. I'm going to select the desktop. Ideally, you don't want to select a desktop. You want to select on a fast drive. But let's say for argument's sake, I put it on the desktop just for this tutorial. I'll select on save. Once you do that, you'll see a window appear doing a preview of your footage and on the desktop you will see a new clip appear and here it is making the reel and episode A as an Apple. That's my new footage and now it's 422 Apple ProRes and again if I'm working on a program Voila, I can just drop that in there. It'll be the same as my sequence. And once I drop it into whatever 32 bit program or any program that is, um, then you can drop it in there and you work with very minimal render time, if any at all. Here I have a, an audio file, which is an MP3. I will drag that in here. If you get an error message such as this, most of the time select on open anyway and you'll press on the play button here and most likely you will hear your audio and it does in fact play. So I will go ahead and select on the file menu, select on export audio and here you'll have your options. It's an mp3 so format I have the options I'm going to select AIFF and sample rate 48 kilohertz so let's say I'm working with a program and my sequence is or my program or my sequence or both uh, I want to have an AIFF and I want to have 48 kilohertz and stereo those what I, if that's what I want then that's what I will select here and I'll select on OK it's gonna ask me where to put this at or where to deliver it to so I'm gonna export it to the desktop which is selected here already and I'll select on save once I do that, I should see a new audio file appear in my desktop and sure enough, here it is, attack one AIFF. So that's how you go ahead and convert a video and audio for your editing program. If you have a DVD, here I have a DVD in my drive and I wish to select a portion of that DVD to export and then import into whatever editing program I'm utilizing. Select on MPEG Stream Clip. Once again, go to the File menu, and this time you're gonna select Open DVD. When you select on that, you have to select the DVD, and then that's as far as you should go. Do not select any other folders. Click on Select. Once you do that, your DVD drive will start spinning, therefore playing your video. And once again, you may be able to view your DVD. Once again, if you select an endpoint and out point, that's what your selection will be to export. Go to the file menu, go to export. I'm going to select QuickTime. Once again, you get this window, compression, Apple Motion JPEG. I'm going to select there and I'm going to select ProRes 422. Just for argument's sake, I'm going to make it 100% quality. And right now, the default of this is 640 by 480 standard definition, which is fine if that's what I'm working on. If I'm working at 720 by 480, whatever the case is, you go ahead and change it to whatever the case may be. I'm going to leave it at the default setting and here I'm going to put make movie and I'm going to put this to my desktop so I'm going to select on desktop and I'll select DVD clip and click on save. Once you do that you'll see 
that the program will export your video clip most of the time it will be faster than real time so it will be a very quick process and once you've done that you will have another QuickTime file in this instance if I select QuickTime a QuickTime file of the selection that I created from or I selected from the DVD menu so that's how you utilize MPEG stream clip in a very basic manner again it's free at this time you go to square 5 and you will be able to download for both PC Windows that is and Mac thank you for visiting making the real Thank you.